Hello folks, it's the festive edition of our EV lease deals of the month. I'm going to take this hat off in a minute because I look like a burk and it's getting a bit warm. So these are what I consider to be the best deals around at the moment on EVs. And they're all based on three months up front, three year deals with 10,000 miles a year, as we always look at. Obviously, you can change that around as you wish. As usual, I'm using Lease Loco. If you want to look at any of these, please use my link for Lease Loco, which is in the description of the video and pinned as the top comment. It means Lease Loco know I sent you, and that helps support the channel. And uh, I think it's the best site around. So there you go. There are a couple of newcomers in this one, but also some cars we're very familiar with. So I'm going to whip through and get through these as quickly as possible. Off we go. So the first one here is the Nissan Leaf. I've always thought it represents great value and it kind of always does. Uh, the price doesn't vary too much from month to month, but it's always one of the best value overall packages. I thought it was time it made an appearance again. So here we go. If you don't know the Leaf, a little hatchback car, actually quite spacious. As you can see there, when you lay the back seats down, you don't get a flat boot. And that's because all the batteries are sitting underneath that back row of seats. So there is quite a big sort of difference in elevation between the bottom of the boot and the back of the seats. So something to bear in mind if you regularly, you know, do big trips to Ikea and stuff, it might be a bit of an issue in this car. But otherwise, it's got a nice size boot, very functional, very cool little car, I think. So this one's 975 up front and then 251 a month. And that gives you a car that's got 168 miles claimed combined range, 7.9 seconds to 62 insurance group 21 and you've got 435 litre boot which is a really good size 150 horsepower front wheel drive there you go that's all there is to be said about the leaf really it's a great little car very very good value for money speaking of value for money we've got this one the mg motor uk zs actually according to this uh, so i discussed this on my least deals of the month video a couple of weeks ago uh, 982 up front and 262 per month. They've updated the pictures on this now because I think on the last video they were still the pictures of the old version where it has had a bit of a facelift. And there you go. I think since they've coloured in that grill, I don't know, I don't like it quite so much styling wise, but it's a decent enough looking little SUV in that crossover, whatever you'd like to call it. So 470 litres of boot space in this one, 273 combined claim mileage. That's really good. 0.60 and 8.4, 156 horsepower, 280 newton meters of torque, and insurance group 28. Again, front wheel drive, 278 miles range claimed. Let's say you get 200 out of it real world. That's going to suit a lot of people for all their day-to-day -day stuff and, and you know, a, occasional long trips and things. Especially when you think on those long trips, if you stop and have yourself a coffee, plug it into a rapid charger sort of get a bit more juice into it that way i think that's how we're all going to start using these things we're going to start grazing with the power rather than having this sort of petrol diesel owner's idea of you have the car full it gets empty then you fill it up again i think we'll all be grazing power with evs in in future but that's a good value package 982 up front and 262 a month that's a really good value car for that size of car with that kind of range on it this one's flown under my radar up until now, I must admit. The Citroen EC4. I've missed this one somehow, I don't know how. Uh, but it looks like quite good value. So you're looking at 971 up front and 290 a month. The range is claimed at somewhere between 217 and 325 miles. Uh, so I guess it's a lot thirstier at higher speed, but they've made it really efficient at lower speeds. I guess that's what the deal is there. 0.69 seconds. So it's not super rapid, which probably helps that city range. 136 horsepower, front wheel drive, 380 litre boot. So the boot's not quite so big on this one, but it's very sort of funky styling, isn't it? There are a lot of these cars coming out now, which are sort of a crossover coupe saloon, jacked up saloon almost. I don't really seem to know what they are, but out of those cars, I quite like this one. So 971 up front, 290 a month. You can see that was a couple of months ago, like through the summer, it was like over 400 quid a month. Uh, it's gradually come down, had a little peak again last month. But 290 seems like decent value on that, especially when you consider where it was over 100 pounds more just a few months ago. 
Okay, so next, this is a this is a tale of two halves. It's a game of two halves. Uh, Vauxhall Vivaro e Life. This, on the face of it, looks like a brilliant option for a lot of families. Maybe for airport cabs, those kind of things where you're taking a lot of people. Big van with a load of seats chucked in it and lots of flexibility around those seats, which way you have them pointed, all that kind of good stuff. You've got a table that pops up in the middle there. So ideal as an airport taxi or for like a big family, you would think, wouldn't you? Loads of room in the back as well. So massively spacious and practical. And I'm looking at that and thinking, God, that'd be a hell of a family wagon. You imagine going on your big family holidays in the UK or into Europe and filling that thing up with people and stuff. You could get your bikes in there. You could even take all your children. And, um, you know, they, they appreciate that, don't they? It all looks really good and quite interesting until you get to this bit. It's got a combined range of 143 miles. Now, obviously, there are use cases where people will use this for just short runs. Uh, you might have people with large families or childminders that use it for the school run. Uh, people might use it to ferry people to and from <clears throat> park and rides and things at big companies. And don't get me wrong, there are lots of use cases where that kind of range is not going to be too much of an issue. But for me, that's such a perfect sort of airport taxi or big family wagon. Why wouldn't you have that with at least 250 miles of range on it? It seems bananas to me. You've got all that real estate to play with. Quite often with EVs, the batteries are in the floor. You've got all that real estate. Fill it up with batteries or use more efficient battery technology. It just seems like quite a good idea that they've been a bit lazy with the execution on somehow. So 13.1 seconds to 62. Very, very quick, is it? But it doesn't need to be with this kind of thing. 260 newton meters of torque. That's all fine, but for me, that range is just not cutting the mustard on that kind of car. Next one's Volkswagen ID3. It's the 150 kilowatt family pro performance, 58 kilowatt hour. And this one's combined range claimed of 262, 204 horsepower, 310 newton meters of torque. That's very talky for a little car. 7.3 seconds, rear wheel drive. Group 25 on the insurance, and you've got 385 litres of boot space. Essentially, very similar sort of car to a Golf, but in EV format. We've seen this on a lot of other videos, so I'm not going to dwell on it too much. Looks like a branch of Ikea in there, doesn't it? There you go. I think we all know about the ID3 at this stage. £1,000 up front, £1,070 up front, and 356 a month. This has been over four for quite a lot of the year went over five for a little bit then it dropped down and it's creeping back up again right now so still a good deal on that but the prices will start to go up i'm sure in the next few months even though this is a factory order and i don't think you're going to be getting this car quickly because factory orders are still very much delayed if you desperately want one of these i would get it ordered because i've got a feeling that prices will go up in the short term this one we've seen in plenty of videos including one i just recorded a minute ago uh, it's the lexus ux 300e this is an in stock deal so you can have one of these delivered to you extremely quickly these were up well over 700 quid a month currently sitting at 433 have been there for a, a few months since about august uh, 1500 up front 433 a month stonking deal 190 miles of range on this one, 7.5 to 60, 300 newton meters of torque, 204 horsepower, and 486 liters of boot space. So that's a really good size boot in a vehicle of this size, especially considering it's an EV, and they've had to deal with the batteries and everything. This is what I mean when I'm talking about that Vivaro that we just saw. You look at the real estate on this, they've got to put the batteries in, and they've managed to have a big boot, nice spacious cabin, and you've got 200 miles of range. The other thing, they've got probably, I don't know, at least a third as much floor space, if not double the floor space. Um, anyway, let's get back to this one. Yeah, great deal. 1500 up front, 433 a month. And this is the top spec one. There are cheaper deals on the lower spec cars. But as it's a Lexus, I've looked at the top spec. Let's just throw this one into the mix as well. The Hyundai Ionic 5. Uh, there is one in my in-stock lease deals of the month video, which came out a couple of days ago, probably at the time you're watching this. I'm not sure I'm recording them more or less the same time. So there is an in-stock deal on that one, but this one's quite a bit cheaper. So this is 1500 up front and then 434 a month. 
This is for the 125 SE Connect 58 kilowatt hour version. And that gives you 240 miles uh, combined claimed range, 350 newton meters of torque, 170 horsepower, 0 to 62 in 8.5 seconds. Boot space at 527 litres. Great, 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 great big boot. Brilliant car. I've spoken about them lots. I love them lots. And yeah, there's not much more to say other than I like them a lot. Uh, these were up. Uh, nearly 600 quid a month and then they sort of drop down and they've been around about this sort of 440 450 mark for quite a lot of the year at the moment 1500 up front 434 a month but it is a factory order having said that we think hyundai factory orders are probably going to be coming through a bit quicker because they actually make some of their own semiconductors next our old friend the tesla model 3 long range and as you know, I want one of these. I've talked about it in I don't know how many videos. So again, we're going to whip through. These were obviously up at 622 for quite a lot of the year. That sort of area, 620, 625. And they dropped down again recently and they're just starting to creep back up. 578 and 1735 up front. Important thing with this is it's an in-stock deal. So that means either there is stock on the ground ready to go or they've got guaranteed sort of claim to stock that's coming in very very soon uh, but you could order one of those today and have it within a couple of weeks or something i dare say uh, next the polestar 2 i've just shown this because this is sort of this is the one that the tesla competes against realistically a lot of people that are looking at the tesla model 3 are also looking at the polestar 2 polestar 2 is not on an especially amazing deal at the moment and it is a factory order but i just want to show you how it compares for price it, Stats wise, they're very similar. 360 range uh, in the cities claimed, 298 combined. On the Tesla, it's 360 combined. They don't state city or anything. 4.2 seconds to 60 in the Tesla, 4.7 in the Polestar. Again, the Polestar is the long range version. Um, but the Tesla, you're looking at 1700 up front and 578 a month. The Polestar, you're looking at 1970 up front and 623 a month. I am hoping to get a test drive in a Polestar, but essentially they're both aiming at the same kind of customer, probably your business user, someone that's doing longer journeys with a bit more regularity. And uh, the Polestar's definitely got a more premium feel on the interior. I, I've been in Saturn one, I just haven't driven it yet. So the Polestar 2's definitely got the more premium feel on the interior, but it's also more traditional and it's what we expect from a car where the Tesla's done something quite different and bold and everything else. This screen's gorgeous on the uh, Polestar, by the way. That centre screen's really nice, really high res. And uh, you'll notice a lot of it looks like a Volvo because Polestar is Volvo, essentially. And so they share a lot of the same parts. But yeah, it's a, it does seem like a very, very nice car. But at the moment, I think the Tesla is far better value uh, with these current deals. And then finally, we're going for a big, expensive premium car, just because I didn't have a big, expensive premium car in here. In fairness, this is probably as good a deal as there is on a big, expensive premium car at the moment. It's not exceptional at all. It's it's an OK deal. The Audi e-tron 370 kilowatt S Quattro, 95 kilowatt hour and 4.5 seconds to 62 combined range of 222 is claimed 503 horsepower. And if you want to tow something, this will do it. I think it's fair to say 973 newton meters of torque, 660 litre boot space as well. And I mean, they're fantastic cars. I think they need more range in them, but that's just me. I always kind of think that. I just think a car of this size and at this price point should have at least 350 miles of range, at least 300. But it's not important to everyone, is it? It's just important to me, which is why it always sticks out. So you're looking at 3,150 up front, 1,050 a month, not a cheap car at all. But if you're looking at that premium end of the EV market, it's not a bad deal at the moment, in fairness. Uh, it's just not a particularly exciting one. Let's say, folks, if you like any of these deals or you want to inquire on any of these deals, please use my link. If you do it over the phone, please let Lisa Loco know that I sent you. It really does help support the channel, as do thumbs up. So please throw me a thumbs up if you haven't already done so. And if you like my videos, give me a subscribe. Even if you don't, subscribe. Thanks ever so much for watching. See you next time.